Hello, good morning, and welcome to the State in History, also known as TDH. This show is all about the events that occurred to date in years past, both recognized by actual historians, but mainly things we personally find intriguing enough for us to bring to you. The sources of this information come from the smart device application Today in History, What Happened Today in History, Historical Calendar, and the website on thestay.com. For links to those sources, the music, and anything else potentially interesting, check the underbar in the description below. Anyway, I am A.O. Xander, and I am joined by... The Slayer. The Slayer. And today is Woden's Day, also known as Odin's Day, also known as Wednesday, October 26, 2022. This upcoming Monday, it's Halloween. I gotta get a, yes, I gotta get a pumpkin. Um, I'm, un, I'm almost unprepared for Halloween. Anyway, yeah. uh, do you want to start us off, or do you want me to start us off? Uh... I'll start, I'll start off. All right, 740. In the year 740, an earthquake strikes Constantinople, causing damage to city walls and the buildings. Huh. All right. Um, in uh, 19, 1492, I, I saw that earlier. That's, oh, hey, Ooh. cool. Interesting. In 1492, lead graphite pencils were first used. Yeah, I have one of them right here. So, yeah. I have many. Yes, yeah. I have many. And watch this. I can make the pencil turn into rubber. Look at that. <laughs> and you have an appointment of interest here in 1534. Ah. In 1534, Charles V names Joris of Egmont as Bishop of, of Utrecht. All right. Bunch of strange <laughs> names. Joris, Egmont, Utrecht. Egmont. <laughs> Egmont. Egmont. <laughs> egg. Egg. <laughs> he is the egg man. Coo coo coo. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. It's the guy that named my state. Oh wow. 1682, William Penn accepted an area around Delaware River from Duke of York. Uh, so I think that's uh, the start of it, right? Are you guys uh, uh, on the Delaware River? Where is Delaware River? Let's see here. Maps. Delaware River. Um, yeah, it does go up into Massachusetts. Oh, wait, no, it doesn't. Wait, no, it's not even Massachusetts. Pennsylvania. It goes right through Pennsylvania. Well, I, I am like, uh, yeah. I am a new level of retard today. What is wrong with me? Um, yeah, so it goes right through Pennsylvania. Um, so yeah, this has to be the start of the uh, of the land that would eventually become, you know, Pennsylvania, named after him. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Um, in seventeen forty nine, Georgia colony reverses itself and ruled slavery was legal. So, there we go. Um, Damn, like that's, the that's... No. politics always uh, going back on what they say, you know, just hypocrite, hypocrite, hypocrite. Uh, but then in 1774, the First Continental Congress adjourned in Philadelphia. Well, all right. And that is also in Pennsylvania. So a lot of Pennsylvania stuff here. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Yeah, this is... Yeah, 1774 was a very busy year. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Especially for the U.S. Oh. Well, yeah, speaking of that, and I just see that there's another 1774. Yeah. The Minutemen were organized in U.S. colonies. All right. Mm -hmm. Yep. That yeah, should be ready. highlighted. That was, let's say those those, the both of those seventeen seventy four should be highlighted because they were big. Yeah, yeah. And they I were actually, a really big deal. I think when the first Continental Congress even met, there was an article, but I don't think that was highlighted mm -hmm. either, either. So, and it yep. should, you know, like I, I keep I keep saying this. I think I really should figure out how to email these guys and offer my help because they clearly need it. Like, there, there's so much organization and, you know, restructuring that needs to be done on this website, on this day.com. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So, like, uh, like for example, uh, like, you know, not like you know, not even just not highlighted. Well, something mm -hmm. else that wasn't highlighted, you know, take a wild guess at something else that wasn't highlighted. That is very significant. Uh, I guess something about the Constitution. No. I'm sure they probably didn't. Uh, it was Sputnik. When Sputnik reached space, the very first uh, oh. satellite, it wasn't even highlighted. It was in there, but it wasn't Jeez. even highlighted. So it's like, that is monumental, you know. 
But yeah. uh, but something else that not only wasn't highlighted, it wasn't even in the article. It wasn't even in the source here. Um, mm-hmm. Was uh, the death of uh, either the death or the birth of Genghis Khan? I think the death. Um, and I was looking Maybe. it up, and yeah, it was on that date because like uh, Miss Grimm told mm-hmm. me about that. And I looked it up, and it was on that date. And I looked at the source, not there. Not even not highlighted, mm-hmm. not existent. So, and Genghis mm-hmm. Khan is a big name in all of history. So that should mm-hmm. be, that oh, should yeah, for be sure. somewhere. But anyway, let's move on up to 1776. Your turn, good sir. In 1776, Benjamin Franklin departs for France on a mission to seek French support for the American Revolution. Yep, he did. And he came back with Rochambeau. Yes. Yep. Uh, Indeed, it did work. Yeah, very good work. Uh, you know, we owe a lot to the French, to the French, the French, the France. <laughs> Just the France. The France. We owe a lot to the France. <laughs> I mean, we kind of, we I think we kind of paid them back by liberating their country twice from yeah. the Germans. Yeah. Well, we, yeah, we did it twice. <laughs> Went through, we were just like, you know what? Yeah, we're just going to steamroll Germany real quick so y'all can get your country back. Because in terms of world wars, they they suck. and They were not very good. Yeah, I see we have a comment here in the live chat here. Mo the Great, yes, uh, Rochambeau was from France. He actually came out here and he drilled yeah. our Continental Army, um, which was the basis of the U.S. Army. Uh, he drilled Indeed. them in, you know, how to how to do line formations, how to uh, how to work under fire. You know, because it's hard enough when you know, when you think about you mm-hmm. know like like loading those guns. You know, like you know you, you fire and you have to load. Uh, you know, a good mm-hmm. soldier can do two to three shots a minute. Well, try to do that while you know you know in that speed while getting shot at, blow explosions, body parts flying over the place. You know, shouting, people falling all over you, and mm-hmm. then you still have to do that three three times a minute. That is that is extreme. You know, training yeah. focus right there. Um, well, they mm-hmm. did. They, they. Uh, I'm, I'm answering Mo again. Uh, they did. Uh, he did help um, yeah. by training us. You know, like he wasn't on the front lines because he was better to be utilized as a trainer, not a soldier. You know. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, 1850. In 1850, Robert McClure cites the fabled Northwest Passage for the first time from Banks Island towards Melville Island. Ah. Uh, well, Mo, um, I can't answer your questions every single time, uh, but um, I don't know. They might have used him for the French Revolution. Anyway, that's interesting uh, for the North the Northwest Passage. Um, indeed, indeed. Yeah. And yeah, you have one more. All righty. In 1861, the Pony Express, Missouri to California, ends after 19 months. Yep. Um, I, I don't remember exactly what... Oh, yeah, because trains. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, moving on up to 1864. Union troops ambushed and kill Bill William T. Anderson, uh, known as Bloody Bill, near Albany, New York. Well, I'm not sure if you ever played Left for Dead. Not Left for Dead. Um, uh, uh, Red Dead uh, Redemption. Oh, yeah. Uh, I love that game. It's Bill fun. Williamson. That's the first thing that came up. Bill Williamson. So. Yeah. Dude, that game is awesome. Ooh, here we go. 1881, the gunfight oh. at the OK Corral. I have been there. Um, <laughs> the most oh, famous wait, wait. shootout in the Wild West occurred between lawmen, including Wyatt Earp and the Cowboys, with Tom and Frank McClary and Billy Clandon killed. Yep. Yep. And, uh, yeah, they made... Oh, it's so famous. They've made a bunch of movies on it. Yeah, I believe. Yep, I believe that's Wyatt Earp, his brothers, and Doc Holliday. Yes. Or two of his brothers. Yep, two of his yeah. siblings, and Doc Holliday was in that fight. Yep, three of the Earp brothers and and the the old Doc. So. The the legend the legendary Doc Holliday. Yep. Uh, uh, Doc the Cock Johnson. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, your turn. In eighteen ninety two. <laughs> in, <laughs> in 1892 Southern Horrors Lynch Law in all its phases first published by African American journalist Ida B. Welsh 
in Memphis, Tim Timothy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> why are you Why are you saying my birth date with a lisp? <laughs> <laughs> Pennsylvania. <laughs> Pennsylvania. Ooh, 1901 <laughs> is interesting. Ah, first recorded use of getaway car occurs after holding up a shop in Paris in ah. 1901. Yep. That's interesting. Indeed, indeed. Mm. Ooh, 1905. Oh. The blue... Oh, the red... Black one? Uh, no, the, uh, the first 1905. Uh, oh, okay. In 1905, first Soviet Workers' Council formed in St. Petersburg in Russia. Yep. So, uh, I'm, I'm wondering, because I know that uh, Lenin did the communist revolution that you know started the USSR and all that stuff I wonder mm -hmm. if he had any hand in this or if he like uh, Hitler uh, joined the party and then um, expanded it because Hitler didn't invent the Nazi party he joined the German uh, workers socialist party and then you know uh, mm -hmm. yeah grew it in a bad direction but um, I'm wondering yeah. uh, like, actually did Lenin uh, start the Soviet uh, um, uh, 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 why can't I think of the word um, where, where was it right here I ju we just read it somewhere here we go uh, yeah. council uh, form Soviet council 1905 uh, okay so the 1905 Russian revolution that was the first revolution um it's saying here, October Manifesto, Victor Chernov. So, uh, I don't think... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, oh. I don't think Lenin had something to do with that. So maybe, it was, I'm not sure. Yeah Chernov, yeah, Chernov did the first one. Lenin did the second one. And Lenin, Lenin's worked. His, his didn't fail. Or at least, I don't know if... I don't know if um, the other guys failed or not. I can't remember. Well, I don't know if it did. It, it did may have. Because, well, it did because or, if his didn't, yeah. then there would not be a Lenin. True, true. Because, Len well, then Lenin would have just, would have been the next guy up. He would have just been the next guy. Yeah. Probably. Anyway, let's move on up into 1909 here. Ito Hirobumi, resident general of Korea and former Japanese prime minister, was shot and killed by Korean nationalist An jung Gyun in Harbin, China. Oh, the, hmm. first, the first prime minister of Japan killed by a Korean. Okay, well, uh, that explains the animosity between Japan and Korea. So, yeah. Yeah, but they've always been at each other's throats. And actually, I think it was Korea tried to invade Japan, and it started all the hostilities. But um, but but then uh, I think it was either Korea or the Mongols when they tried to invade Japan. Uh, oh, yeah. There, there was, was the a, they a, yeah, it a tsunami or something, and it destroyed them. It was so... They... <laughs> They they got, I can't remember. It, I don't know yeah. if it, I don't think it was a tsunami. It yeah, was no, a uh, I think it, it was, was a hurricane. Yeah. Or whatever the word no, is yeah, for the hurricane. Typhoon. Was there. It was yeah, a typhoon. typhoon. Yeah. Yeah. Coincidentally, the Mongols were so bad at their timing to invade Japan that they just got hit by Mong. They they got hit by typhoons. Like they just got wiped out. Yep. And Japan was under the impression that they were protected by God. <laughs> yeah. Like they were protected by God. Yeah. And then that gave them that, you know, that, you know, air of superiority. Ooh, we are the God's chosen people, you know, and then the rest is history. Everybody starts thinking that they're superior and, you know. And then, and then America happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then like, okay, uh, my, my, my favorite analogy uh, was from, um, um, I forgot the comedian's name, but he was, he was ranting about... Uh, uh, how poor writing it is to say one thing led to another. So it was like uh, a young artist from um, from uh, Austria got rejected uh, to get into an art school. One thing led to another, and the United States of America dropped two atomic bombs onto the sovereign nation of Japan. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, how does that lead to that? Like one thing led to another you need to explain it was um, <laughs> I was gonna say Japan attacking us led that would have been that would have made more sense if it was Japan attacking us and then we just we got them back with nukes well no he's trying to make it nonsensical that's the point 
You know, like, uh, yeah. he's trying to explain how lazy writing it is to use one thing led to another. Because, you yeah. know, you're just, you're, you're putting a blank in and not filling it and just using a, you know, using, you know, a common phrase to, to yeah. get away with being lazy. So, but anyway, 1918 here, Cecil Chubb gave prehistoric monument Stonehenge to the British nation. Wow, okay. Uh. So, uh, uh, yeah, Chubb, what a last name. Ooh, you got a good one here in 1918 as well. Ah, interesting. Ah, yes, yes. In 1918, Germany Supreme Commander General Erich Ludendorff resigns, protesting the terms to which the German government has agreed in negotiating an armistice. Good. Um, oh, well, not good. Um, Nine. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was, I was reading what you were saying, Cecil Chubb. Um... But yeah, like, uh, Germany wanted, uh, they didn't want it, like, uh, to be completely screwed, but they still did anyway. So, they dragged yeah. their feet, and it took a while, but eventually it did get done. You got a music premiere the in the year 1919. In 1919. Edward Elgers. Elgars? Elgar. Okay, we'll go with Elgars. Um, cello concerto in E minor. Up uh, 85, his last notable work premieres at Queen's Hall, London. Huh. Okay. Yeah. And also in the year 1919, U.S. President Woodrow Wilson's veto of Prohibition Enforcement Bill was overridden. So like, he was trying to prevent Prohibition, but uh, Congress said, no, it's going to happen, and uh, that rose to crime. And um, little known fact, the U.S. government actually actively poisoned beer uh, to try to intentionally get it, people sick so that way they'll be like oh well I'm not going to drink again and uh, a handful of people died so the government intentionally poisoned and killed its own citizens all to push you know this lunacy you know of no alcohol like you know so you know anybody who, who ever argues about me like you know oh the government's good uh, no they're not and I have evidence, so. And then, yeah, uh, there, there's more evidence right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 1922, Gertrude Bell was appointed Honorary Director of Antiques in New Department of Antiques in Baghdad, Iraq, origin of the Baghdad Archaeological Museum. All right. Hmm. Oh, here you go. <laughs> in 1922, Italian government resigns under pressure from fascists and... Benito Mussolini. A bibbidi bobbidi bibbidi, but where's his mustache? He can't be an Italian without a mustache. You know? According to Family Guy. Uh, but yeah, this is his takeover. Noticed, ever notice his jaw kind of looks like the Giga Chad jaw? A little bit. Like, he kind of looks like a cartoon. You know? It's like, uh. You ever heard of Josh Hutchinson? No. I was gonna say they have they have like the same jaw. Like it's just a square jaw. Oh uh, Josh, it's Josh Hutchinson. Josh Hutchinson. Yeah. Images. Yeah. Look <laughs> at his jaw. Oh, He's got I the see. same jaw. <laughs> square jaw. Hold on a second. <laughs> there. Bro looks like a Minecraft character. He does. He looks like Dude, oh my God. this can't Bro, be it's... this can't be real. This can't Bro, be it's real. The... Bro, oh my God. There's what is that? Three. That's three default Minecraft skins from Dude, Xbox Edition. Dude, look, his hair like coincides with it. His head is a perfect rectangle. Oh my God. <laughs> and it's rhombus too. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh wait! Oh, I saw a Giga Chat in Benito's outfit, I believe. Oh, you did? I oh. think. You know, <laughs> no, no, that's not. Oh no, that's Swastika oh, no, that's, there. Uh, oh, never mind. That's... Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> anyway, let's move on up to 1927 here. <laughs> in 1927, Duke Ellington sings Creole love song. Okay. Oh, even more. In 1930, Dmitry Shostakovich is ballet Zolotoyev Vyek 
premieres in Leningrad. Why are you reading that in my voice? I do not know. It's the best voice of all time, I guarantee it, I guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, you gotta believe me. <laughs> 1931, Eugene O'Neill's play Cycle Morning Becomes Electra premiered in New York City. Okay. Hmm. We got some sports history. 1934, while Washington Senators player manager Joe Cronin honeymoons with Mildred Robertson, owner Clark Griffith's niece and adopted daughter, he is sold to Red Sox. Huh. Okay. I see. Ronald Twump. Oh, my God. Who Ronald Twump? <laughs> He's Donald Trump, oh my god. Yeah. Donald Trump. In 1941, the second meeting of partisans Tito and Draza Mihovec in Yugoslavia. Okay. Bro, he looks funny. He looks so miserable. <laughs> this guy? <laughs> Look at this dude on the left. He looks like he just doesn't want to be there. <laughs> He's like, she's like, just let me go back to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, I, that's how I feel right now. I've been awake since four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have one here in 1949 uh, um, In 1949 U.S. President Harry Truman Increases minimum wage from 40 cents to 75 cents Good Alright, alright, alright That's a, like a 60% increase or something You know what they need to do? What? Minimum wage should be 11 bucks an hour Instead of 950 well, in in your place, yeah, over here it's already like eighteen dollars or something, or like fifteen, eighteen dollars. Bro, I'm making your state's minimum wage. What the hell? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How does that make you feel? You're making no more than a burger flipper at McDonald's. <laughs> if they haven't uh -huh. already been replaced by a machine, so. Yeah. Anyway, moving on up into 1950, Branch Rickey resigned as Brooklyn Dodger president. Okay. Oh. And then 1950 as well, Mother Teresa founded Missionaries of Charity in Calcutta, India. Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa. Yeah, but uh, yeah, she was born um, like when she was like around eight. I don't remember the exact. Uh, um, actually, hold on a second. She was born in 1910. So yeah. Uh, when she was a, a young girl, like, you know, uh, four years old uh, and on, uh, her entire life just was about war because that was World War One, And she was born um, in uh, the uh, Ottoman, Ottoman Empire. Empire. She's, yeah. And we all know about the Ottoman Empire from World War One. Yeah. So all oh, she yeah. knew was war. So no wonder she was such a strong advocate for peace, you know? Indeed, like, indeed. And we got a boxing title fight in 1951. Future world heavyweight boxing champion Rocky Massiano defeated former champion Joe Lewis by TKO in the eighth round at Madison Square Garden. All right. Maybe that's where they got, what if that's where they got the inspiration for Rocky? Hmm? I believe so. Makes um, sense. I mean, different name, but like. Yeah. Inspiration it's reasonable. of Rocky. Um. Chuck oh. Bender. Sylvester oh, Stallone's mind. character, Rocky Balboa, and portions of the Rocky film series were inspired by the life of Chuck Webner. Ah, okay. Right. okay. Makes sense. But maybe, you know, this fight could have been like one of the fight scenes. You know, who knows? I don't know. I mean, it would make sense. I mean, it's what I'm assuming is an Italian guy with a black dude. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it would make sense. Mm-hmm. Then we got an election of interest in 1951. Winston Churchill was re-elected British Prime Minister at the age of 76. That's up there. I think we might want to get him some of that uh, hair repair product. Uh, I don't think he's around anymore. But No, no, no. If he was, if he was still yeah. around, might need to get him some of the uh, hair repair. Cause yeah. That comb over is not doing him any favors. <laughs> no, it's not. And you know what? Uh, I'm not sure if I said this to you before. But, like, you know, we were talking about Joe Rogan earlier, you know? Oh, yeah, Ro Jogan. Yeah, Ro Jogan. Well, it's like, with the, net, with the last name, like, uh, Rogan, you know, uh, you'd expect, you know, him to, like, be playing around with the pronunciation of his name and be like, Rogaine. Oh, hey. Hmm. Yeah, you know? Rogan should, <laughs> Rogan should have used some Rogaine to keep his hair. 
That's what I'm saying. So, but anyway, you got another historic event here in 1955. In 1955, Ngo Dinh Dame proclaims Vietnam a republic with himself as president. All right. Uh, yeah. So that was uh, South Vietnam. Uh, I was about to start talking in his in their accent, but I I chose not to. Oh yeah, no. Um, that would be extremely. That'd be a uh, little. Yeah. That'd be a little rude. <laughs> that'd be a little mean. That'd be a little narrow sighted of you. <laughs> Thank you. Nineteen fifty seven. <laughs> In 1957, the USSR fires Defense Minister Marshal Grogi Zukov. Okay. I don't know why it also proceeds to do a Russian accent. <laughs> 1962, JFK warned Russia that the USA would not allow Soviet missiles to remain in Cuba. <laughs> indeed, comrade, indeed. Yes. <laughs> hey, did you know that Santa's a communist? He is. He technically is. I mean, I mean he, he also wear, he wears red, you know. I mean, it makes, he, he wears has, red. He doesn't no pay money his slave laborers, it. you know. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't even get paid either, and, except for in cookies and milk. Oh my god, that reminds me. Remember that other meme with like Santa on his like seventh millionth <laughs> cookie and milk? Like, oh my god. Uh, <laughs> I remember watching. Oh my! They, I think they're making a movie about Santa. They're making a new one where it's like where he's fighting robbers or something. Oh God! It's something goofy. <laughs> I was like, "Oh my God, another one!" It's <laughs> like we already had the Kurt Russell ones, which they were, eh, they were okay. Anyway, 1962, Nikita Khrushchev sent a note to JFK offering to withdraw his missiles from Cuba if the U.S. closed its base in Turkey. The offer was rejected, unfortunately. So once again, not only did we initially you know the Cuban Missile Crisis by putting our missiles on the Soviet's borders in Turkey but they're straight mm -hmm. up like and they're responding to our aggression they're straight up like hey well you know like and, and then we order them to remove the dude, dude the West is being so needlessly rude you know in this situation like like the the, the Soviets are completely uh, in you know in the right with this situation with this you know, like I, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm not a communist. I'm not a Russian sympathizer. But right is right and wrong is wrong. You know, and it doesn't matter yeah. who you are on the spectrum. Right is right and wrong is wrong. Period. Yeah. And we ordered them to remove the missiles, and they're like, "Okay, we will if you do the same." And we're like, "No, what the fuck is wrong with us? Seriously, wow. You know, wow, that's ridiculous." Um. Anyway, moving on up into 1964, Eric Edgar Cook uh, became the last person in Western Australia to be executed. So, not in all of Australia, Australia but in Western at least. So. It's in the Western Australia. Western Australia, don't you know? Crikey. Hmm? Boy. And then what happened in 1967? In 1967, Shah of Iran, Mohammad Rezi Pahlavi, crowns himself after 26 years on the peacock throne. Okay. Selfish. Crown somebody else, you selfish idiot. Peacock throne. P C O C S. Let's see what the peacock throne looks like. Oh, that is definitely a peacock throne. Look at that thing. Dude. That is very flashy. And look, like you, do, it's not actually a throne. You just sit on it, like you, like, like you sit like uh, Indian style, or like, you know, on your shins. It's not an actual chair. It's just a pillow. So you climb up onto this box and you just sit on it. That is really awkward. I would. That I can't sit on my shins like that. I, that is not comfortable. And there's no back support or anything, so you're just like there in the open air. That that just you're seems just like very there. uncomfortable to me. I, I want something around me, you know? Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what happened in 1968? In 1968, future world heavyweight boxing champion George Foreman wins the Olympic heavyweight gold medal when the final against Jonas Sapulis, Soviet Union, is stopped in around two at Mexico City Games. Ah. Well, okay. Hey, yep. don't fuck with America and boxing. Yep. We're gonna win. Yep. But we're, we're paying. MMA. You know? yeah, MMA's a different story. Oh, this is interesting here. 1972. In 
1972, Edwin Land introduces the first truly instant camera, the Polaroid. Yeah, Polaroid, yeah. Um, Polaroid. SX-70 camera at an event in Miami, Florida. Now, Flower. You want to know, <coughs> know why the invention of the Polaroid camera even occurred, from what I've been told? Uh, what would that be? What would that reason be? Pornography. Uh, because... <laughs> No, if you take a picture of your significant other, you know, and naked, you know, like, because, cause, you know, married couples, they can't always be together, you know, like, even back then. So every now and then, you know, like, the husband's got to, you know, or the wife's got to squeeze one out, you know, like that. Um, and it would be better with a Polaroid because you don't have to take it to a development shop and have other people, God knows how many, ogling your wife, you know, or your naked husband or whatever, you know. So the Polaroid really... You know, helped in that uh, aspect. Oh, from... Yeah, <laughs> so just... but it makes sense. I'll, I'll... It makes sense. I mean, reasonable. I mean, I mean, now you don't even have to worry about that. You don't even have to print it. And... Well, no. Now, now you, now you just got to worry about the cloud and who's hacking your phone. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't, don't, don't accidentally upload it. You know, from your OneDrive onto your slideshow. Oh shit! <laughs> you know. Like, oops. 1972, uh, guided tours in the former prison at Alcatraz by the National Park Service began. I have not been there yet. I would, I would actually like to visit that. That'd be pretty cool. I would too, not because of the prison, but because of what it was built upon. It used to be a Civil War era military installation, as most people know. It used to be, you know, a, a fort. And um, yeah. there's actually like one of the prison yards, uh, like you know, they're doing GPR, ground printed penetrating radar, you know. And they noticed because yeah. they were looking for the lost battery, like because you know uh, you could see you know remnants of where there were gun batteries, you know, on the island. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was one that they just can't find, and then they realized it was under one of the prison yards. They built over it. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Ah, the rock. Yep. What else uh, happened? 1972, Henry Kissinger declared place uh, peace is at hand in Vietnam. No. No, it's not. <laughs> no. It's not peaceful. Yeah. Uh, but like, uh, I'm not sure if I keep skipping over you or what, but uh, like, let's have you take your turn again, uh, 1972. Right. In 1972, Ringo Starr and singer Lulu appear... In non-speaking cameos on Monty Monty Python's Flying Circus program. program. Well, that's cool, dude. That, that that show. Yeah. It's Flying Circus. Oh, that's fun. That was that was a blast to watch. A blast. I have not seen it. It was though. a circus. It's. Yeah. It was a circus it, that was flying. Indeed, indeed. Mm -hmm. Oh shit! My arm's healing pretty easily. Pretty good right now, actually. Yeah, how's that cut? Like, I'm getting a bandaid off. <gasps> okay, so it's not like I was envisioning this like long cut or something. So it's just like a little nick. Uh, oh no, there's it's decently long. Huh. That's what it's, she it's said. Heal, it's actually it's healing way faster than I expected it to. Good, probably because it was like you know a good wound. Anyway, let's move on up to 1975 here. In 1975, Anwar Sadat becomes first Egyptian president to officially visit the United States. Well, that's cool. Nice. Yeah. And, uh, ooh, um, hmm, uh, 1980? In 1980, New York City Marathon Great Weights of Norway wins for third straight year in two hours, 25 minutes. 41 seconds. Point three. Well, 41.3 seconds. Yeah, 41.3 seconds. Alberto Salazar claims men's event in two minutes... Two hours, nine minutes, and 41 seconds. I was going to say two, two minutes. minutes. Jesus Christ, he's fast. Jeez. Like, damn, we got the flash. <laughs> he ran 26 miles in two minutes. Good Lord. <laughs> we, we need to make super soldiers out of him. <laughs> Got another Captain America. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> nineteen eighty two. Go ahead. Oh, um nineteen eighty two, MLB Philadelphia Phillies, Steve Carlton became first pitcher to win. Four C Y 
Cy Young and the word Cy Young Young word yeah. the word. Cy Young was the name of the guy. The award is named after yeah. him. So like it's uh, both you and Sohan were calling it Cy Young Awards. No, it's just Cy. That's his name. Okay. Um. Yeah. Phillies. Philly. Philly. Yep. Yo, I uh, I met a Raiders fan today. <laughs> oh, I bet that was fun. <laughs> Dude, like, hey, were they, uh, I was at the. Were um, they a former prison mate? Were they a prison? Were they formerly a prisoner? Uh, might have been. Honestly, okay. might have been. Because like I was, Makes uh, sense. I was at the uh, the tire shop, you know, earlier today, you know, fixing my dad's wheel. Um, that sounds weird. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but. <laughs> Uh, but no, like, uh, then this car pulls up, and this guy, he has a, a Raiders, you know, sweatshirt, and I see uh, uh, on his seats, he has, like, a Raiders seat covers, you know, like, you could put oh it, like, you know, so, and then on the back, he has two Raiders stickers on his back, uh, one on the top left, uh, the other on the bottom right on his bumper, and the other one's on his trunk, and then, like, a L.A. Lakers license plate cover. So, and I just I came up to him and I'm like, guy. I'm going to take a shot in the dark and say you're a fan of the Raiders. He's like, yeah, what made you think that? I'm like, I don't know. The 75 decals you surrounded yourself with? <laughs> like, <laughs> Dude, I hate Ra- I hate the Raiders with every, passion, with every fiber of my being. I hate the Raiders. <laughs> I don't even care that they've beaten my team. They beat them every year. But I hate them with a burning passion, along with the Chiefs. <laughs> I still view them as below as below me. <laughs> they are all I swear, bro. Every year the Raiders have some player. They have this cycle of disappointment where every year they choke in the playoffs. Hmm. Well, let's and... not stray too far from the subject matter. I don't want to get too okay. much. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm going to take this one here. 1984, The Terminator, directed by James Cameron, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger and Linda Hamilton, who's yeah. in the U.S. Yeah. <laughs> Get to the, the chopper, come on. My father was a legit SS officer. He killed Jews. So, screw your freedoms. <laughs> oh, my God. Proceeds to get taken a picture of without a mask on, like the hypocrite he is. So, but then moving on up into 1985, Doug Harvey's number two Joyzy was retired by the Montreal Canadiens. All right. Joyzy. 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 One year later, 1986, French McLaren driver Alien Prost retained his Formula One World Drivers Championship with victory in a season ending Australian Grand Prix in uh, Allardyce. Or Adelaide, one by two, uh, one title by two points from Nigel Mansell. I, hmm. I swear to God, my brain was going to say Thornberry. <laughs> smashing. What, Nigel, Nigel Thur- Thornberry. Thornberry, yeah, smashing, yeah. Then 1988, Ronald uh, Twump uh, billed Ronald Mike Tyson two million dollars for four months of advisory service. Huh. Mike Tyson. My name is Mike Tyson. I was billed two million dollars. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna knock his ass out. Damn. Anyway, yeah. uh, I'm gonna take this last one here. Then we're gonna do the split, and then you are gonna start us off in the year 2000. So then, uh, All right. 1997, Jacques uh, Villeneuve finished third in European Grand Prix at Jerez in Spain. The first Canadian to win F1 World Drivers Championship. Won by 39 points from Michael Schumacher. That is a lot of points. That is mm-hmm. a big oh, yeah. So. Yeah, it's a lot. Yep. Yeah, get over there. Anyway, going to uh, do the split here. All right, welcome to part two. Let's see, I just want this over here, just in case. Uh, why don't you start it off? What happened in the year 2000? In the year 2000, Baseball World Series, New York Yankees beat the New York Mets 4-2 to in a game of five at Shea Stadium to win Subway Series, Yankees' third straight title. MVP, the GOAT, Derek Jeter. Dang, there's a lot of GOATs. Derek Jeter. Like, dude, like, like, how many GOATs are there in your eyes? Like, you know, I've heard of, like, no less than, like, three. You know, it's funny. I, well, I mean, my, my current server profile picture is one of the, is the NASCAR GOAT. Ah. Kyle Larson. So he's the the end goat, NASCAR goat. 
Yeah, he's the goat that got suspended for a whole season, came back, and won a championship the next <laughs> season, the year after. He got suspended for saying the N-word, and, and then wow. Haley Deegan said the R slur or whatever, uh, that they claim is a slur, and then she got a slap on the wrist. Well, it really isn't a slur because, you know... Well, I mean, yeah. Like, like it's an it's an actual term. Like, you know, it's used in... Oh, air, yeah. It's used in plumbing, electricity, you know, um, like, uh, yeah. you know, aircraft flight, you know, everything. Yeah, what do they have? Like, they have one... Yeah, there's a sign that says, um, I think it's brake retarders and pro or prohibited, I think. Yeah, well, like when you go like, into certain towns. Uh, no, like, uh, like yeah. Or oh, I thought you were talking about the aircraft. Well, I mean, oh no, there because there's one I seen. There's one going into the one town that I go in that I used to live in. That has a sign that says that. Huh. It has something to do with like brake retarders, I think. I don't know. I can't hmm. remember. I'd, I'd have to. I'd have to go buy it to see it. All right. Or to remember what it says. But what happened three hundred sixty-five days later? In two thousand one, United States passes USA Patriot Act into law. Yep, not good. Spy mm-hmm. on your neighbors. Spy on your coworkers. Report everything to the government. You know, fucking stupid. And then people were mm-hmm. doing it because of the fear of all the terrorism and everything that. Our government was perpetuating, like, yep. They're they're the cause and the apparent effect. So, mm-hmm. and uh, you got a 2014 here. In 2014, American tennis star Serena Williams beats Simona Halep of Romania six to three, six to zero to successfully d- defend her WTA Finals title in Kelang, Singapore. Oh, cool. I swear, she's really good at tennis. Yeah. Like, she's considered to be the greatest tennis player. Like, the greatest female tennis player ever. Yep. And it shows. Like, even this past season, she was coming back from having a rough year. She was having a rough game and then just bounced back. And was, it's actually it was doing surprisingly well. Well, she's built for it. I mean, like, look at how wide mm-hmm. her shoulders are. Like, she has a very manly chest here, minus the boob mm-hmm. part. But, like, you yeah. know, she has some power back in there. You like, have see. you seen... If you've seen her whole build, like, she's built for tennis. Yeah. Like, she's bulky. Like, she's, yeah. like, she's jacked. Yeah, she is. So. Yeah. And in 2014 as well, uh, Dilma Rousseff was re-elected president of Brazil. Okay, that's cool. President, that of, the president of Brazil is a woman. That's awesome. That is, like, the most 1980s <laughs> short-haired female hairstyle. I like it. That is cool. like, I see I see that around occasionally. Very seldom do you see it nowadays. Very seldom do you see anybody wearing a sash outside of a beauty pageant. True, true. That's like a 1920s type or, of political thing. Or as Miss America, Miss, or whatever, Miss whatever state you're in. Yeah, a beauty pageant. Yeah. Yeah. Then we got a film premiere He's... in 2015, Ooh, Spectre, the 24th James Bond film, directed by Sam Mendes and starring Daniel Craig premiered in London. Here we go again. That's this guy. Right. Why, like, were you here yesterday? Why is his mouth so small? Like, it looks like he's like, like, you know, sucking it into his head. Or is it just <laughs> me? Like, like, it, it just, it looks as, like his mouth is cartoonishly small. I, I don't understand. It's, <laughs> it's bothering me for some reason. It's, so. yeah, it's an okay movie. It's not, not the best movie in the world, that's for certain. I it's alright, though. I haven't seen a James Bond movie since uh, Die Another Day, I think. What was the one with the oil? The oil pipeline? Might have been that one, I don't know. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot. but Anyway, two more years later, in 2017, cremation ceremony for King Buhumbul uh, Adualaj of Thailand was held in Bangkok uh, one year after his death. The capital of Thailand? Yep. Uh, then uh, you have another 2017 here. In 2017, Jacinda Ardern is sworn in as Prime Minister of New New Zealand, becoming the world's youngest female head of government. All right. Hmm. Yeah. No idea who that is, but yeah. Yeah. Yo. The greatest rapper of all time. Oh, here we go. Hell yeah. <laughs> 
In 2017, National Party of New Zealand found guilty of breaching the copyright of rapper Eminem's publisher and ordered to pay 413000 for use of the song Eminem Esqua. Wow. Speaking or of Eminem New Zealand. Ad. Wow, so that same time, uh, the, the, she became sworn in as the world's youngest female head of government and as the prime sudden, minister of New Zealand. The same exact moment that that same country was fa- found guilty of breaching copyright for Eminem and had to pay them, uh, had to pay him almost half a million dollars. That is insane. <laughs> that's a yeah. that's a rough year for New Zealand. Today's a bad day for New Zealand. Or no, well, a good and a bad day at the same time. So, so I guess it's just a tepid day. I don't know. Um. Ooh. And then, uh, this next 2017 here. In 2017, oldest known tsunami victim revealed by sediment discovered in 6,000-year-old skull by scientists near Aitape in Papua New Guinea. Dang. So that's interesting. Obviously, there are tsunami victims before that, but this is the oldest known tsunami victim. So that's really yeah. cool. That is, that is yeah. Oh, there's another one in 2017. 2018. Um, what are you? Uh, Irish singer Sinhead O'Connor announced she has converted to Islam. Um, okay, so now we know it's a female. Uh, but if you're if you're Islamic, first off, is that a, is that a tattoo of Jesus on her on her chest? It looks like it. Uh, it looks like it. it looks like it's a looks like in that photo it's a fresh tattoo. That like is a tattoo. Of Jesus. Like that is a very that is a very recent tattoo. Like, when that photo was taken, that tattoo was probably just finished. Yeah, well, easily, like, a couple weeks old. Mm -hmm. You can can still see the red around it, too. Yeah. So, yeah, though, that's only, like, maybe three, four days old. I I don't know how long you keep this tape. I know that there's tape. You have tape on the tattoo. You keep that on for a couple of days. I don't know how long. Um, Mm -hmm. But, so that's really weird. So, she has a tattoo of Jesus on her chest, and she converted to Islam. So does that mean that uh, she, um, like, she had it removed or something, or uh, that would hurt? I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. She's got the money to do it. But... Anyway, uh, then moving on to 2020, Japanese Prime Minister uh, Yoshihide Suga said the country will become carbon neutral by 2050. Well, I have a feeling hmm. that they're gonna go back on that. Because of how everything's going on right now, so yeah. Um, and then, um, yep. Yeah, I'm just gonna take this 2021 here. The United Nation reported, uh, or a, a United Nation report stated, current climate pledges put a world on course for catastrophic average uh, 2.7 degrees Celsius temperature rise in this century ahead of Glasgow Climate Summit. So more of this hmm. climate change malarkey, lies, lies, and more lies. So. Anyway, before yeah. we move on to the births and deaths, uh, audience, were there any articles that grabbed your attention more than most? Anything that you wish that we had elaborated on? Anything that you saw, like, you know, real quick while I was scrolling, you know, all this stuff in between, all this white stuff? Like, um, you know, open up a dialogue in the comments section. Like, you know, if you have anything you want to add, you know, start making a comment, uh, you know, there. Anyway, moving on to the births, uh, do you want to start us off here in 1427? In 1427, Sigismund, Archduke of Austria, born in Innsbruck, Austria, died in 1496. Ah, and that's four years after uh, Christopher Columbus uh, landed in South America, so uh-huh. or in the Caribbean. Yeah. Oh, oh, this guy with the hair that looks like it's trying to escape him. <laughs> and has the squid lips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look at him lips. He's just like, look at his lips. <laughs> <laughs> They're so luscious. <laughs> <laughs> in in 1759, French politician and revolutionary, first president of the Committee of Public Safety during the French Revolution, born in Argesur, Aube, France. Good Georg Gorg Gorg Gorgas Danton. <laughs> Gorgas. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's that's the face he has. Like that's not not how you pronounce my name. <laughs> like, excuse me. <laughs> anyway, we have 
Richard Sears, uh, born on this date in 1861. He was an American tennis player, U.S. National Championship of 1881 through 87. Born in Boston, Massachusetts, dying in 1943. Why does he look like an escaped convict but dressed for a <laughs> wedding? Why, why does he have a striped tie, dude? Bruh, he looks like he's dressing for a formal event in prison. Yeah, I know, right? They asked him to dress nicely, so he just cut a piece of his other clothing pieces off it. Make a hat and then also made a tie with it. I guess I guess that's what you wear in prison when you go to church. Not sure. Yeah. Prison church. Prison church. <laughs> prison church. Then we have Mahalia Jackson, 1911, a U.S. gospel singer, whole world in his hands, born in New Orleans, Louisiana. What, why? Is it? Wait a minute. Home of Do Louisiana. See? Yeah. Louis. Louisiana. Louisiana. <laughs> Uh, that's, a, that's a typo right there. Um, I'm going to start, you know what, I'm just going to start calling it Louisiana. And then start calling the other one uh, uh, Kansas and Arkansas. Oh no, I already call Arkansas Arkansas. I already okay. call it Arkansas. I've always called it that. Yeah. Because that's how it's spelled and that's how it should be pronounced. Yeah. That's anyway, how it's supposed to be pronounced. Not this the... lady passed away in 1972. What the hell? Whoa! Yo, it's oh, the it's, uncle. It's uncle. It's uncle Fester. Fester. It's Fester. Yeah, Fester. Yeah. Fester, let's go. <laughs> Jackie Coogan, American actor, born in 1914. He was st he was starred in The Adams Family, The Kid, Oliver and, Tw and Oliver Twist. Born in Los Angeles, California. Nice. And Oliver also Twist, as... I think he must have been like the the soup giver, or something like he's like the what? Like, let's see here, well, Jackie okay. Coogan, Oliver Twist. You know what I'm talking about, right? Coogan, he. Oh wait, no, he played Oliver Twist. Really? Yeah. Damn. I think. Okay. Uh, hold on a second, Jackie Coogan, Oliver Twist. Um. Uh, yeah, he was. Uh, yep, he was. He's Oliver Twist. Okay. It says it right there in the cast. Yeah. Yeah. Fagan and Jack Coogan as Oliver Twist. Uh, well, I'm not going to find it here. Um, but yeah, so I, I believe so. Anyway. Um, who uh, who else was born today? Uh, 1919? In. Actually, hold on a second. 1916. Sorry. In 1916, 21st president of France, 1981 to 1985, born in Jarnac, France. What's his name? Francois Mitterrand. Yep. Then, 1919, we have Edward W. Brooke, a U.S. politician and the first popularly elected black U.S. citizen to the U.S. Senate, Republican of Massachusetts, 1967 through 79. Born in Washington, D.C. Cool. War Washington. Washington. Huh. We have uh, Muhammad Reza Pahavi. Uh, this guy looks familiar. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we had him earlier. Yeah. Born on the state in 1919. Last Shah of Iran, Persia, from 1941 through 79. Born in Tehran, Persia, and then died in 1980. So, yeah, that's right. So I think he, like, he left. <clears throat> He's got a uh, large nose. Uh, yes, he does. Probably peck wood with that. Dang. Woodpecker. Yeah. And then who <laughs> else was born on the state? Pat Sajik, uh, in 1946. Whoa. Yeah. U.S. I've TV host, that. Wheel of Fortune, and the Pat Sajik Show, born in Chicago, Illinois. Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> oh, God, it's your turn. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. Uh, 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 the, the prime uh, evil. Right here. You know what? Um, okay, in 1947, U.S. First Lady, 1993 to 2001, Senator of New York, 2001 to 09, uh, uh, Secretary of State, 2009 to 2013, and 2016, Democratic presidential nominee, born in Chicago, in Illinois, it's Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Bitch tits. Watch what you say. You might get Epstein. 
I don't give a fuck. Just let them. <laughs> let them come. Let them come. Let them come. Let them. I'd like to see them try and get my house. <laughs> let alone watch, bring me down. That's like watch. All brilliant. of a sudden, your webcam turns on involuntarily, and we just see like Hillary behind you, like coming up with a with a morphine. <laughs> Just hit me with more of him, like, no! <laughs> no! No! <laughs> like, bad Hillary. <laughs> Go back to prison. <laughs> where you belong. <laughs> Go to prison where you belong, Hillary. <laughs> yep. <laughs> anyway. Hey. Uh, let's go in on 19... to this guy who has no forehead. In 1949, Evo Morales, Bolivian... Bolivian politician and 80th president of Bolivia from 2006 to 2019, born in Isalawi, Bolivia. Now here's something it says right here, but it doesn't say it in the article. He was the first indigenous president of Bolivia. So, how hmm. how how about that for a concept? Somebody who is actually native to the country, you know, of the ethnic descent, to actually lead it. When are we going to have our first wow. Native American president? Like. Well, why do we have a black president before a Native American one? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You know? Anyway, we have uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, 1961, the father of Kenya, I believe. No, he's not. I guess he's the son of the father of Kenya. Uh, Canadian Prime Minister from, yep, uh, 2013 through 2022, so uh, his term must have just ended. He's also son of Jomo Ken Kenyatta. Born in Nairobi, Kenya, and Jomo Kenyatta, I believe, is the founder of Kenya. So let me look that up here really quick. Uh, yes. Um, actually, no, a former... Um, uh, who is... You know what? Um, founder of Kenya. Jomo Kenyatta. Okay, there we go. So he's the son of the founder of Kenya. Mm -hmm. so, so he was born on this date. So happy birthday, Uhuru. Um, and then you have, uh, you have one here in 1967. Uh, in 1967, Keith Urban, New Zealand, Australian country music singer and songwriter, Somebody Like You, and The Fighter, born in Wenagiri, New Zealand. I didn't know he was, I didn't know he was from New Zealand. I thought he was a, I thought he was an American guy. Yeah, did you know that Vin Diesel is, uh, German? I don't know. Yeah, no, he's he's uh, German and I believe Puerto Rican. I think. Okay. But he's actually was born in Germany, I think, or something like. He's a German actor. Possibly. But was Vin Diesel born in German? Wait, hold on a second. Kenya, what the fuck? <laughs> Wait. Why does it say Kenya? was Vin Diesel Kenyan? born in Saving Private Ryan? What? Was, <laughs> was Vin Diesel born in Tokyo Drift? <laughs> was Vin Diesel born in WWE? <laughs> oh my god. Guardians of the Galaxy. In I, mean, <laughs> I mean, technically, Guardians of the Galaxy, it wouldn't be wrong. He technically was. I guess so. Because Groot was born in Guardians. Uh, no, he was born in California. I was going to say, yeah, he was born in Cali, but he has... Hmm. He, yeah. Or actually, um, no, it wasn't Vin Diesel. Um, um, no, it was... No, 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 no. Who's the other guy uh, from Die Hard? Um, Who? Oh, um... Uh, you talking about the main character, or are you yeah, talking about... the main character. Yeah, Bruce Willis? Bruce Willis. I think Bruce Willis was born in Germany. Um, yes, he was... Bruce Willis yep. was born in Germany. That's who I was thinking of. I like how you mistook him... Or, I like how you mistook Vin Diesel for the other bald guy. Uh, bald guys all look the same, you know. I, you know, I, whoa, I, whoa. I, I, I'm racist against bald people, I guess. You know, whatever. I don't care. My mom likes. For some reason, my mom likes bald people. Hmm. Ah, oh. yes. Peter Griffin. <laughs> In 1973, Seth MacFarlane, American animator, TV producer. Made American Dad, Family Guy. I think he also made The Cleveland Show, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And filmmaker, he made Ted One and Two. Yep. There's a few other movies that I could that I'll mention. Uh, a Million Ways to Die in the West. Yes, I have that movie. That's it's a funny. Good movie. Shit. Yep. 
born in Kent, Connecticut. Nice. And uh, Mr. McFarlane, if you just so happen to be watching this, uh, if you're looking for any uh, you know backup voice actors, I know a guy. Yeah. Yeah, it could be Badger Warburton's backup. <laughs> We got Guy Sebastian, 1981, a Malaysian-born Australian singer. Angels brought me here, born in Klang, Malaysia. So I guess if I guess if, uh, he was singing about how he got to Australia, then the angels brought him there. Got out of Malaysia, you know. And then moving on to the desk, starting us off in uh, 900 AD, we have Alfred the Great, an Anglo-Saxon monarch who was king of Wessex and king of the Anglo-Saxon, died at the age of 50 or 51. Somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. So, all right. That's a cool portrait. I don't know why they had to make his cheeks so red. Looks like he, he took a punching or something. Like, it looks like his black eye, like, like you know, maneuvered away or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, but then you got here uh, in 1864. Well, this guy. In, eight, in 1864, American Civil War pro Confederate rebel guerrilla leader. Lawrence Massacre, Centralia Massacre, killed in battle by Union troops at 23 or 24. Died in 1684, William T. Anderson. You mean 1864? It's, yeah, 1864. Yeah. 1684, I don't think there was an America to have a revolution. <laughs> 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 yeah. Ooh. What, whoa. That is a... That's an angry looking lady. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. That is not a sight. To, that is not a pleasant sight. Angelina <laughs> 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 Grimke, 1805 to 1879, American abolitionist, women rights activist, and suffragette, suffragette, an appeal to the Christian women of the South, dies at 74. Thank God. Ugh. Dude, Ugh, dude, how would you react if you turned the corner and saw that waiting for you in a dark alley? It's not because of the thing she did. She did a good thing. Yeah. But, but she looks look like at a that monster. thing. <laughs> that she... thing looks like the Baba Yaga. <laughs> <laughs> Baba Yaga. Oh my god. <laughs> no, this looks like the Baba Yaga. What the hell? <laughs> That's the fat Baba Yaga. <laughs> That's the fat Baba Yaga. It's, it's Baba Yaga panda version. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth Sadie Stanton Art turned for have turned and not you know to <laughs> Sorry I was trying to do a fat person voice. American woman rights activist, abolitionist and writer dies at the heart of heart failure at eighty six. Wait, it makes sense get in here? I didn't her. know that she was back in the server. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Damn. <laughs> I hope she sees this and just like cries. Oh shit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna make it? Should we should we just I'm just gonna keep calling her home button because she doesn't have a home buttonless phone. What? Oh. Yeah, she still she has like an iPhone SE or something. I was like, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> Like, imagine have, buying the SB. You should have just got the 10. <laughs> we have Itu Hirobumi, uh, uh, Hirobumi, died in 1909, was a Japanese... Uh, wow. A Japanese samurai, first prime minister of Japan, four terms between 1885 and 1901, and resident general of Korea, 1905 through 1909, assassinated at the age of 68 by a Korean nationalist, An Jung Jion, in Harbin, China. Um... We just you know, covered that earlier. Yeah, we did. Um, and now I'm seeing that uh, he was a resident general of Korea, so that sounds like uh, Japan was uh, uh, occupying Korea at the time, which I think they did, actually, back uh, back in those times as well. So uh, he was assassinated by because he was an expansionist. He was trying to step his foot on other nations' throats. The, the, we got Hattie McDaniel, the first black U.S. citizen actress to win an Oscar, Gone with the Wind, play, playing Mammy, dying of breast cancer at the age of 57. That is really young. That is really unfortunate. Um, but really, right. really cool that she's the first uh, to, to win a, uh, an Oscar. Um, she played uh, the maid in that movie, Gone with the Wind. Yep, R.I.P. Yep. 
Oh, here you go. <laughs> Igor. Igor Sikorsky from 1889 died in 1972. Russian American pioneer of aviation in both helicopters and fixed wing aircraft. Dies at 83. Dang. Igor. Igor. Well, that's, Igor. That's cool. He was a pioneer in you know, both types of flight. So. Then we have. Uh, ooh. I, I literally, oh. I literally read that name, and I was expecting something to explode. Abu Bakr Abagdadi. Oh my God! Nineteen seventy-one to twenty nineteen, leader of Islamic State of Iraq, and the Levant, Levant Isil, did not a suicide vest after being cornered by U.S. special forces and dies at forty-eight. Well, that explains why I was expecting something to blow up. It already did blow up. Ow. So. I was going to, you know, I was, oh, wait. I think, wait, he was he was the ISIS leader, wasn't he? Yeah, it says ISIL. I, ISIS is ISIL. He's the leader of Islamic State of Iraq and the Lebanon, well, so I that's saw ISIL. Hold on that. I was watching the news that day. <laughs> I remember, I was at my friend's house when I, when I heard about that. <laughs> huh. I was at Shally's. I was at my friend Shally's. Ah. Well, hi, Shally. 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 <laughs> and then why don't you take this last one, and then we'll wrap up the show. And, okay, Robert Evans, American producer and actor, love story, The Godfather in Chinatown. Godfather. Hmm. Masterpiece. Yep, I have not seen it. Guys, at the age of 89 in the year 2019. Yep. But yeah, The Godfather is a masterpiece. Well, happy birthday to all the birthdays. Rest in peace, all the deaths. And uh, that shall conclude the show. Once again, you can check the underbar in the description for any links you may find interesting, uh, which also includes but is not limited to all things Omni Coalition. We, uh, we stream on my personal YouTube on Aosander. On, um, but as I said before, I just got to move us over to Twitch. So eventually we're going to be moving mm -hmm. over there. But if you're watching this on our on uh, the Omni Coalition's YouTube or on our BitChute or Rumble, uh, that's great. Uh, anyway, for your dose of passive events daily, we stream every day at 10 o'clock in the morning Pacific time. And 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yep. For all of you and all of us, I am Ao Xander. And I am the Slayer. Yep. And you, viewer, are you. And until you catch us tomorrow, or if you're interested in news, notable events, weather, and sports, we do a, a news show at 2 to 3, most likely 2, but we shall see, uh, depending on things, because I have other stuff to do today. Um, but if you're just into it for the history, uh, we'll see you tomorrow, whenever you'll see us. Uh, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection. Rate five thumbs and subscribe. Toodles! Toodles!